Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's about to start. Show start. It's gonna start right now. There we go. There's the, there's the graphics. There we go, and here I am. It's the show. It is the Star Wars show. It is Collider <laughs> Jedi Council. We got a crew today. She's back from Belize. She's joining us. It's the Smith Lord, Tiffany Smith. Very nice. Right next to her, it's the Yodi one, Mark Yodi Riley. Hello, Yodster. How you doing? Good to be here on Jedi Council. And he might be, he could be the grouchiest human to ever, ever be here and be at the yard house right after this. It is the one, the only, the pit boss, Kylo Ken Napsok. Quit taking pictures from helicopters of sets. What's that? Oh, oh, yeah, that's why you're pissed off. I get it. I understand. All right, so we are going to do a lot of fun stuff like we always do on this show. We're going to talk about Star Wars movie news. That's right, everything in the world of the movies, whether or not it could be episode four, it could be episode five, episode seven, eight, Rogue One. Who the hell knows we're going to talk about it? Kenneth Napsaki, and what do you got? Hey, Christian, we're going to start hey, with Ken. a minor spoiler. So, Adam, you can put up that spoiler. Ba Boom! Wee! Now you can watch the movie in peace. If you don't want to get spoiled, it's minor. I even I agree, though I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have wanted to see this, but I saw it and it's all right. No, it's all right. Uh, Star Wars News Net has run a story about the native creatures on Actu, where Grumpy Luke Skywalker's been hanging out. Uh, this have uh, there been a previous story uh, of a kind of a half creature we see there like behind it. Christian's head there of a it's a puppet, possibly a puppet, a real life puppet, no CGI or maybe a little bit of CGI. And now we get the artist's concept of what could be the actual native creatures on this planet hanging out with Luke. I'm still hoping for ferrets and overalls, but looks like we'll get this. <laughs> and these could be tall creatures, approximately nine feet tall. Uh, no, no evilness, no good. They're just there hanging out, helping Luke make breakfast, Christian. I like it. I like yeah? it a lot. Yeah, and I think, well, you know what it actually reminds me of? I think that it, it actually gives me a bit of the prequel feels. I feel yeah. like the aliens had a lot more to do in the prequels than they did in the originals. They were just, in the, in yeah. the original movies, they were just kind kind of monsters or kind of bumbling around or drinking a, something at the cantina is where I think this is going to be a little bit more interactive that they're natives of the planet yeah. and that Luke is aware of them and familiar with them. And it gives me a bit of that uh, Hoth feel a bit, but they mm. seem like they're going to be a little bit more civilized. So yeah. I dig it. You know, I'm with you sometimes. I don't necessarily know if I needed to see the image right away, but it's out there and I figure we should talk about it. But yeah. Tiffany, you see it. What do you think? No, you don't like it. I mean, I, I I wish I hadn't seen it because to me, honestly, that image is not going to do it justice as to what it's going to look like in the film. Um, and when I see that, I'm like, it looks kind of it looks a little lame to me. Like, really? I don't know. The picture does where it's like I know when I see it on the big screen, I'm going to be more excited about it. how am I, I. This is like the first time I think ever that I've started a show and been like, I don't know. Right. Yeah. Usually, I'm like positive, channeling yeah. John Campia here. Um, but I, I feel like I didn't mind seeing the beginning where it's like you see half of it because you don't get a full image of what it actually is going to look like. But then seeing the full drawing, I'm like, I, I would have rather waited to see it there. I think that it definitely does kind of have a throwback Star Wars feel, though, where it's like, OK, there's going to be creatures on this planet and who knows what their interaction is going to be. It also kind of makes me feel a little bit more like things that we've experienced and seen in Rebels because we've seen a lot more creatures who don't necessarily speak, but have some really tight connection to that planet or the land or whatever it is. So maybe there's something to do with like the nature there. I yeah. would I would really dig that. Riley. I'm with you, Tiff. I'm not, you don't I'm like not it, crazy. Huh? Wow, I'm I not like crazy it. about it. Um, it's only because, yeah, we're horrible people. We don't like a sketch drawing Speak of something that truth. we haven't seen yet. Stay the course. Don't worry about action. me. Stay the course. You worry um, about to, no, yeah, about I me. just, it's hard to, it's hard to make a, a judgment on it just it's a sketch and so i i'm just going to reserve complete judgment i love what i do love is seeing that it's a practical uh creature effect as they're building it on the you, you know i like seeing that and that my imagination can go and say cool maybe we're going to see something in motion that harkens back to the original trilogy which is what they're doing in this new trilogy uh new trilogy movie so but the sketch just he looks like a dr seuss walrus character i agree i totally and, um, agree i'm kind of like <laughs> All right, cool, cool for a sketch. Let's see it in action. That's where I stand. Ken, where are you at on this? Uh, you know, I, it's, I'm going to surprise you. I actually kind of like it. I, there you I, go. I think it's, uh, you know, again, it's so early. This is this is why I don't like stop taking pictures of sets from helicopters. Let us <laughs> see it as it's supposed to be. But if it's practical, it's fun. And I kind of, I'm at Tiffany. Imagine the plush doll you're going to be able to buy of this creature, which I've now named Gus. All right. I think I just Thanks, imagine Adam. the plus ball uh, I, uh, that uh, that you could do. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want that plush doll. 
I feel like yeah. it's going to have weird like walrus stuff, like what Riley was saying, on its mouth and the hands and feet and all. Yeah, yeah, no, but I think it's good. I think it's going to... No I, BB-8, I can tell you that. I think it's going to walk up to Luke and be like, Hello, Master Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want I, some breakfast? Oh, God, I hope not. Uh, but you never know. That is what no, it looks look like it would it. do, Are though. you ready to Hello. play a game? I think it's going to be oh, different. It's going it's it's to be more like... Oh, I'm not, 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 yeah. blah, 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 but no, translated cool. into... Yeah, that, that's Do more, you want hash <laughs> browns? R- much better. It's With like, your bacon, Does your friend want some, too? Is it for sense? Oh, God. That's what no. I want to know. Uh, well, I don't know. I should yeah. say no right could away. Be that, that to the I, I know. Yeah. It, it, weren't there rumors at one point that on the island there are like creatures that yeah. kind of help and I mean, may be so force sensitive? I don't know. Powerful. It's the first Jedi temple. All right. Well, this there story's boring now. Let's move on. <laughs> What's next? Uh, can I do the whole <laughs> show like this character <laughs> Gus from Act Two? I don't want to um, eat your hash browns John on Boyega. The plane. Finn himself caused quite a stir on Twitter, which is very to. easy to do. When he tweeted, "Time to play a villain," <laughs> laugh my ass off. Like seriously, because he realized right away he started an entire speculation uh, that Finn was going to be bad. This actually prompted Mark Hamill, the Star Wars daddy of all of us who said uh, see how easy it is to accidentally leak a spoiler son question mark hope he didn't say anything about our relationship in episode eight no this is no spoilers. No, well, no. no yeah, what Adam, is just, happening? You can, <laughs> what's going on? Uh, B- uh, Boyega responded, Dad, <laughs> how about you train me too? Post blaster overheats and it's whack wind fighting. Anyways, funny exchange, but it does kind of show what the speculation can can really kind of just tear out of some of these tweets. Yeah, well, and I assume, I don't know, but was he talking about Detroit or was he talking about something else? He, he said, hey, Detroit it's, it's not Star Wars, kids. Man. Everyone calm down. He's, but he's, he, This is one of the guys who knows probably more than anybody what he can and cannot say. Yes. Boyega is very in tune. He's not, guys, and by, by the way, they already shot episode eight. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, you know, why would anyone, I mean, people just automatically, anything he says, they're going to just link it back to Star Wars. I didn't ever take it no. as anything except he's, the guy's a talented actor. He's going to be doing a lot more stuff. So I want to see him as a villain and other stuff. It reminds me of Arnold Schwarzenegger, honestly. Like when Arnold started his career and he was doing, you know, Conan and then jumped into Terminator, it's like, wait, that guy's going to be a bad guy now? That's risk. That's it was a very risky move. Hmm. But now, now, now actors do that very much all the time. And I think that very good actors can make a solid career out of it. So I'm glad he's playing a villain. And I never once took it that he was playing anything in Star Wars. Yeah, well, what if it's just an upcoming project that he's that he signed on for and he's having a little fun going out there saying, time to play the villain, right. and we don't know what it is yet. Well, he's got Pacific Rim uh, Uprising coming. I, I I doubt he's the villain in that because I think he's uh, Idris Elba's son in the movie. Detroit, his, his movie that's coming out in August, I wouldn't call him the villain. He looks like the lead character. So this seems like he's just signing on for something. And like you said, Christian, yeah. If he's going to play a villain, awesome. Stretch those acting muscles, Boyega. I can't wait to see what he does outside of Star Wars. We love him. We love him in Star Wars, but calm down, guys. Yeah, It's not Star Wars. Kenneth Nepsakian. So what you're telling me is John Boyega is signed on for the new Terminator with James Cameron? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Wow. That's, but that's Put honestly that how they read it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's, yeah, a, good, hey, that's a good jump, though. I like I that. I love John Boyega. I would love nothing more than to hang out with him, have a butterscotch milkshake, and play Battlefront 2. Can we make that happen? It's possible. Um, we'll ask him when he's on the show. I'll follow him into battle uh, with whatever he wants to do, but yeah, this is clearly not Finn. So, But fun. Fun Star Wars internet craziness. Tiffany? I feel like it's one of those things where he completely innocently was excited about a new role that he's doing and he's like I'm going to tweet something and be like oh, I'm going to play the villain and then he was like oh crap everyone's going to think <laughs> right, this is Star right. His phone I just th- put yeah, like, ah, yeah. shit. Right. <laughs> I think kids, he had kids. no thought about it anyone linking this to Star Wars just because he was excited about something else and he tweets it and then this whole storm happens and he's like Oh, come on. And I love that Mark Hamill joins in on it because I'm sure there's part of him. If it were me and I tweeted something and then everyone thought it was Star Wars related, I'd be like, oh, my God, am I going to get in trouble? Right. But as soon as Mark Hamill jumps in, you're like, oh, I'm in the clear. Yeah. <laughs> like, that no one should get in trouble. with him. Like One of the stories I didn't put in there uh, because I was just so sick of talking about it was the whole Mark Hamill responded again to that whole Ryan Johnson thing. Right, right. Because he said he got in trouble through yeah. Lucasfilm. Yeah. That's something that I understand. Sure. That Lucasfilm's like, what are you doing, man? Like yeah. you can't you can't question 
the director of the film, whether or not you agree or not, keep it behind closed doors. And he just went on to say, no, no, I said that initially. What I meant was blah, 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 blah. But this is nothing like that. This yeah. is him talking about future roles. And I don't think anybody got mad at him. And I don't think anybody had the right to get mad yeah, at him. No. So, all right, Ken, what's yeah. next? Uh, director Edgar Wright was out promoting his new film, Baby Driver, and he was speaking with CNET and dropped some tiny hints about a future project. And he said, uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I have something crazy, but I can't tell you. And then uh, uh, the CNET uh, editor-in-chief, uh, Connie Glu uh, Glu 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 uh, sure. Glu Glu yeah, Connie, uh, sorry about that, says, uh, oh, no, you can tell us. And he says, no, I really can't. Uh, laughing, uh, we'll see you at Christmas. So CNET tweeted out in promoting the story, wait, could Edgar Wright actually be making a Star Wars movie? Edgar Wright responded with, uh, CC, at saved you a click, no. <laughs> so end right. of that story, but hey, fun speculation. What would an Edgar Wright Star Wars movie look like? It would be very interesting. I think that Edgar Wright, though, has proven, you got to remember something when you think about Edgar Wright and Ant-Man. Edgar Wright was attached to Ant-Man way before the MCU was a thing. This mm -hmm. is like 2006, and he had ideas for it, and he started developing things. So w they kind of honored the agreement later on down the line when the MCU was filmed. And Edgar Wright was like, well, this is not the vision that I kind of had for this thing. I wanted to go in my own way and, and let me do yeah. my thing. Star Wars is very similar to the MCU, even though yeah. comments have come out to where it's it, they're a little different, but essentially the same. You're telling the same story connected to this larger galaxy here, too. Now, I think there are certain directors that that works very well for, and then there's others that it could be problematic for. I think Edgar Wright might be one of those people. I think when Edgar Wright is the type of guy, I'm looking forward to Baby Driver, he is one of those guys that's able to make an Edgar Wright movie. When you're a director, you're making a Star Wars movie. You can always have the flair of a, you know, let's say a, a Gareth Edwards. It was directed by Gareth Edwards or, you know, or a J.J. Abrams, but you're making a Star Wars movie. Ryan Johnson clearly makes Ryan Johnson movies, but it's going to be overshadowed by Star Wars. That's just part of it. I don't know if Edgar Wright is the type of filmmaker that wants to be overshadowed by anything in the genre or anything else except making Edgar Wright movies. I could be wrong, but I, I think that it would I would be very interested to see what an Edgar Wright Star Wars movie. I just don't realistically think that's going to happen. But Ken, am I wrong? No, I don't think you're wrong. I think he would have a great take on a Star Wars story. You get Simon Pegg there to help him, and uh, and you got you'd have some fun. But again, it's his style. He you, it's an Edgar Wright movie. When you see it, you're like, that's his style. There's little those little tricks mm -hmm. and stuff, and the tone and everything. Not not that he couldn't adjust, but I I think it's would he want to adjust? And, right. and that style doesn't necessarily translate to Star Wars that we know of. It would have to be not necessarily lighter, but everything he does is kind of funny and creative and, and just, just different. But I, I bet he could get the world. I bet he could really climb in and have some fun characters. Maybe it's a, a prequel era comedy. I don't know. Yeah. Could be fun. But yeah, but I definitely, uh, definitely uh, would be interested. Tiff? I think I would love to see him do a sp like one of the standalones at some point, a Star Wars story. Because I feel like the further along we get, the more they're going to push the envelope with those films. And it would be an opportunity for someone like him to come in and really put his stamp on the Star Wars universe. Right. And obviously, having Simon Pegg involved in the world, like they're just, you put them in anything together, working together, and it's, you know, magic. So I could definitely see him doing one of those down the line. I do agree, though, that I think he is a director that's like, this is how I do my films. This is what I like to do. So I don't think one of the episodes would be the right fit for him. Um, and I think that that's what ended up happening with Ant-Man, where it's like he initially came in and it was like, I can do my own vibe, my own feel for this. And I think that the MCU is actually going more that direction right. now, letting directors really have their own feel for the films, that if he came in at this point, they might be more open to him doing it. So I'm like, I think that there is a real opportunity for him to come in because I think that we are going to want, especially after Han Solo, right. like if we see the humor and lightness in that one, then then it would be a really good opening for him. And I think after everybody sees Baby Driver, which I'm so excited to see, I think that's going to open a lot more doors for him too. Riley. Yeah, I think uh, the crazy project he's referring to yeah. is Grasshopper Jungle. What's that? It's a movie that is batshit insane if you read the synopsis. It is so crazy, uh, but I, I, all I'll say is it's it's a it's a teenager, it's a young adult novel about a teenager uh, who's looking for a sexual identity and accidentally unleashes six foot tall grasshoppers okay. uh, into the world. So <laughs> that's probably what it right, is that right. he's referring to. And uh, to comment on, you guys have already said it, I think he would make a great Star Wars spinoff, a Star Wars story. 
I would love to see it, but I think that I think based on what you said, Tiffany, I think he doesn't want to have to play in somebody else's sandbox. I think he wants to create his own, and that's why Grasshopper Jungle is probably on his uh, project next. All right, what's next? Donald Glover, as we know, is going to be Lando Calrissian. He was speaking with Deadline on uh, a bunch of things, but uh, Lando, of course, came up, which would make sense, and he had a lot of great, interesting things to say. Say, this is probably one of my favorite experiences ever for uh, working under like a huge conglomerate. It's actually been quite an enjoyable, artistic thing. I get to play him, Lando, in a way that I think is honest and true and cool. It's great because I didn't have to write anything. I'm focused strictly on being this guy. I really respect him, and I respect the actor who played him before. I learned a lot about his character, so it's actually been fulfilling and nice to just turn off everything else and focus on being someone, so it's been cool. He goes on to talk about Lando being a very complicated character, perhaps even more complicated than Han Solo himself, because for the first time you meet him, you don't know whether to trust him or not, and you're constantly not knowing whether to trust him. I like that about Lando. He talks also about being uh, raised on Star Wars and Lando being his favorite character. So Donald is bringing a lot to this role, Christian. I love these comments. I mean, this is a guy who not only understands Star Wars, Lando, understands acting, understands what it is. I mean, you hear him to where he's just like, I'm not, because he is a very talented guy. He's been writing a lot of his own stuff, doing a lot of different things, but he's just like, I just want to lock into this guy. I just want to be this dude and figure out how to do this. And and the fact that he did it and that we're going to learn more, I think it goes back to a question that we got in the show not too long ago about whether or not Lando could get his own standalone. I think that right now when you when you hear it, people are like, ah, I don't know, Lando's just kind of a side character and if he, he can have his own standalone. Hearing these comments and how complex, I think he's setting us up for that. I think he's setting us up for the fact that Lando could have his own standalone movie. I, I wouldn't be surprised if talks have started about potentially having a Lando standalone movie. Uh, he was my first choice. I remember we were talking about it I think a couple of days before it was announced. And he said, who would you want to see? And it was him as Lando. And I'm so glad that he's getting the opportunity to play him. I think uh, this is somebody, he, he, like you, look, Alden Aaron Reichholm still getting close to getting his name right. I believe that was right. Um, I, right. He's got a lot, he's got a lot to prove. And when I think of him, I don't necessarily see Han Solo, but I think he's a great actor, mm -hmm. and I want to see what he can do. When I think of Donald Glover as a young Lando, I see it immediately. Mm -hmm. So these comments are incredible. I love, I'm even more encouraged than I was before with this guy. Tiffany, how do you feel? I, I mean, I would say he's not just an actor. He's an artist. Like, this yeah. guy has his hand in everything, where it's like, Childish Gambino and then Atlanta and Emmy nominated and all of these things and choosing this role in particular, I don't think he's gonna take on anything that he didn't feel like really pushed him further. And the fact that he is saying, yes, I'm only gonna focus on this one guy. I wanna be totally tapped into this. Right. I think that one says he just really respects the character and how much people do love Lando. Cause he even says in there, he's like, I'm shocked and surprised to hear how many people say that Lando is their favorite character. Um, so I think that him saying that, it's like, I'm not gonna spread myself thin. I'm really, really tuning into this guy and making sure that I get it right for myself and for all the fans. And I love that. And I mean, immediately I always think, cause sometimes when you get to do interviews with people, it's like, oh, what would their theme song be? And I'm like, I wonder what the song is that he has for Lando. Like if he's written something that he has, or if there's a particular like style that he listens to. Cause usually people who are really tapped into music in that way, when they're playing a character, it's like they make a playlist that goes along with it. So I'm like, I want to know what that Lando playlist is. Nice. We got Riley. Uh, yeah, I love these comments. He, he seems to have the best handle on this because I immediately think of Empire Strikes Back. I mean, we know the end game, at least for that movie with Lando, he's going to betray his friend. We know it, we've seen it. Empire is my, one of my favorite movies all time. So complicated, yeah. Like now I think about his character arc in this movie, how is that gonna be? Is he gonna be like a gray character like by the end of this movie? Are they friends? I know I, I know the history of the Millennium Falcon, their, their game of Salbeck that they play. Is it, it just is fascinating to hear him talk about it because all I think about is what he does in Empire. So it just adds that much more uh, excitement for me in his take. I am getting more excited for this movie. I mean, I think initially when it was announced, I was like, I don't know if we need a Han Solo movie, but I'm still, there's things that I do want to see. But the more and more I hear about this, the curiosity between finding out how, um, see, Alden. I'll say Alden, but how he's going to be, how uh, Donald Glover is going to be, what, how, how they're going to 
portray this entire thing. I'm getting more intrigued. Are you there yet, Ken? I, I've been there, yeah. to be honest with you. I understand all these standalones. That's c- you could ask, why do we need these type of things? To be honest, and I, don't, I don't mean that to be counter you, Christian, at all. I'm just no. saying, I, I've been there, and I couldn't be more happier with Donald Glover getting this role. I think a, char- a character we wanted the, him to play uh, going into it. He is an artist, Tiffany. You're so right. Uh, early on, I was like, well, he, you know, he's if he's just the kid from Community, which I know he's not, but if he comes in there and it's kind of like a sketch version of uh, of Lando, we'd have a problem. But that's crazy because he is an artist. He knows how to do this. He is an actor. He's a performer, and he's going to really dive into it. These comments confirm that. As far as you're saying, Christian, of a standalone, the Lando comic was great. Yeah, it was. Um, so that shows that Lando can carry a story for mm-hmm. sure. There's enough to his character, enough to his past. But I'm telling you, if they go on with this uh, and they have more Han Solo, quote, Han Solo films, him and Lando in, in a straight-up buddy kind of adventure – that goes wrong because let's not forget an empire. You no good, dirty, low. What you pulled? Yeah, yeah. what you pulled. That's it's got to end kind of bad. What's that story? Is it just mm-hmm. about the Falcon? Is it just that? Um, I think it could go to a great spot because I don't think he'll be super large in this film. Well, even what, when Han says to Chewie, when Chewie says to him, he's like, "Well, that was a long time ago. I'm sure yeah. he's forgotten about that." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, uh, very curious how that's. I also gonna go. think it's one of those things too where you look at the actors who are a part of this movie and the closer that we get to it and the more projects we see each of them doing, Mm -hmm. it makes me excited to see the influence that they're going to have on each other. So even seeing what working with Donald is going to do for Alden and the same thing for Donald. (laughs) And then, you know, with what's why am I totally blanking on her name? Amelia Clark? Yeah. yeah, I was like, not Cersei. <laughs> Targaryen. Targaryen. Um, that seeing all of them, what they're going to bring to each other as actors, I'm really excited about that, mm-hmm. especially because they're all like younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, what's next? Mm-hmm. Hey, director Colin Trevorrow is out uh, promoting his movie, The Book of Henry. He was actually here yesterday at Collider. Schmoes, no, we ran yeah. a great interview. It's an interview with night. Mark. Mark Ellis did an interview with him. It's on Schmoes right, right now. Go ahead and check it out. Um, as one would expect, anytime he's out promoting these uh, these movies, uh, someone's going to ask him about the big movie coming out. In uh, That, of course, being Star Wars Episode Nine. Fandango was speaking with him, and they said, yeah, so you're about to make a Star Wars movie. Asked him some question about that, how much you're going to influence this younger generation. Handed them a movie and an experience that may, they may cherish for the rest of their lives. And he said, uh, this is how it was with us growing up. Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia were all characters that were able to we were able to identify with in various ways, and especially with the character of Rey and what she means to young girls right now and the challenges that she's up against. It is, is extremely crucial that I understand what actual children are feeling about these stories that we're telling them. And I think it's important that I have kids. And if filmmakers don't have kids, they should go talk to them because they don't see things the same way that we did when we were kids. So, yes, I'm very dialed into that because I think it's a uh, requisite of the job. It goes on to say a lot of uh, other things about the pressure of making Star Wars Episode Nine. And, uh, Christian, uh, you got to talk with him yesterday and, and shake hands with the man. How are we feeling going into Nine? I, I really I really think this guy's a stand-up dude man I, he, he's a down-to-earth um, fan of this property I was talking to him before Mark was interviewing him and we were just talking about I mean I was talking about how my daughter has been watching some of the Star Wars movies and we were just talking about some of the the themes overall and how kids relate to it adults relate to it and and he gets it he understands what Star Wars is he's not just the guy that was kind of hired for the job he's a fan of the property he's a fan of the franchise and I think that one of the things that Mark asked him about that I took out of there was was the, the he he said it he's like look I'm essentially making a sequel to Ryan Johnson's movie. I mean, I am, because because Mark had asked him, because, you know, there's there's rumors that at first that Ryan Johnson was writing episode nine. He's like, no, you know, there that just, we talked about a cert, some things up top, and he, ultimately he didn't do that. But he did kind of write this movie because it's a sequel. And he's like, so I'm following, I'm following a lot of stuff that he set up in eight. So yeah, I mean, just I, in the same way that Ryan Johnson did some of that stuff for, for JJ. So even that report that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, it's, it's very different um, that you have to follow beats. You have to follow things. And to hear him, what he wants to do, how he sees certain things. I mean, I'm, I know that some people didn't like Jurassic World. And I think that people also have to realize when you look at Jurassic World, that was a job to where it's just like you had to make a fun adventure movie that was based. Basically, it was just essentially a ride that you would go on in Universal Park. That's what it was. That's what he was tasked to do. And I think that he did that. This is more layered. It is certainly more layered, and he sh- he has shown whether it's, you know, Mark again raves about Book of Henry and how that movie is very layered, and then Safety Not Guaranteed was very layered. So I think he, I know that he's got that. So hearing those comments, I'm 
I was encouraged beforehand. I think he's going to uh, shock a lot of people. Riley, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I'm completely with you, and I'm going to say safety not guaranteed meets Jurassic World, and you have an idea of what he can do with Episode Nine. Seriously, he knows how to do character. Watch Safety Guaranteed. I can I uh, not guaranteed. I have not seen Book of Henry. I want to see it. I'm excited to see it. Mm -hmm. I have complete faith in him. When I saw Jurassic World, I had the best time in the theater. That is a popcorn eating, scream, yell, cheer movie. It's dinosaurs eating people. There's not layers in this thing. So when people give him crap for it, Christian, you defended him better than I can. He did what he needed to do. Yeah. He relaunched a franchise mm -hmm. and we're gonna get the second one that is probably gonna be a, maybe a little bit more layered. But for this, Everything he's saying is ringing true to me. Again, I go to his past work. I want to see Book of Henry to color it even more, but I have faith in this guy. Ken? Yeah, I, I, I like Jurassic World. I'm not a Jurassic Park fan, and maybe I felt that maybe that's why I saw it after the fact, after the hubbub died, and I, and I get uh, criticisms of all big movies, but they're big movies, and, and they're uh, made with certain specific reasons in mind sometimes, some of them business, but I, I enjoyed it. I love Safety Not Guaranteed. Christian, you're actually the one that turned me on to that movie, so I, I believe it's there. And also, as he says in this interview, uh, you know, his hope is to make it as richly as satisfying as it could possibly be, and he has a lot of help. He, he, he shouts out uh, Kiri Hart and Lucasfilm Story Group, his producers, Kathleen Kennedy, Abrams, Ryan Johnson, and Larry Kasdan. Um, so you know uh, he's got a good support, and not that he couldn't be on an island by himself making this movie, but he's got a team behind him. So right. it's not just about what he can do, it's what a, it's about what Lucasfilm can do. Yeah. All right, that's everything in the world of... Um, oh, you didn't yeah. say anything. Sorry, mm -hmm. I thought you said something. Sorry, no. Tiffany, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, uh, Hi, Tiffany. <laughs> How you doing, Tiffany? I feel like having the final one in a trilogy might be one of the harder positions to be in. Yes. I mean, JJ obviously had a really hard spot to be in, reintroducing a lot of people to this world. But where he is, it's that you have to take everything that everyone else has done and put a nice neat bow on it that makes everyone happy, whether that's everything has a happy ending or it doesn't, but people feel like you honored everything that happened before, especially with, you know, things that have happened with Carrie Fisher and, you know, things that have happened outside of the film world, getting to the point of this last film and this new trilogy coming out. Right. Um, the thing that really stood out the most to me, I think, is him talking about having kids and looking at them and asking them what they feel or directors going to kids. And I don't, I, I feel like I definitely had a connection to Star Wars, but I didn't realize how much of a kid connection you can have to something until Wonder Woman came out. And it was like, I just started crying for no reason. Like right. when you see a little girl being such a like little badass, you right. know? And so knowing that perspective and saying, okay, some little girl is going to see this movie and that's going to be her recognition of Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Some little kid is going to see this episode that he's doing and that's going to be their connection to this film. And years later, they may see something different and it's going to make them feel something. Sure. Um, so I think that was really cool and just a different perspective where it's like you've heard so many directors talking about the movies and, you know, honoring their memories as kids and what they felt about it and how everyone's such big fans. But I think it's really special that he's saying, I'm really looking at what the next generation of Star Wars fans are going to be and making sure that they are honored in this movie too, which I think is really cool. All right, well, that's going to do it for <laughs> the this version of the movie news here in Star Wars land. But now we get to that part of the show that we simply call... Thank you, Adam. All right. What's the deal with Canon? Everything in the he world of Star He was paying you Wars. back for forgetting about me. No, nah, he's just not Cody. Um, so we're going to get into the world of Canon, everything in the Star Wars universe that is Star Wars. However, it's connected through books, comic books, video games, TV shows. A lot of stuff actually happened this week in Canon. Ken, what do we got? Well, E3 was in town here over at Los, An Los Angeles. Los <laughs> Angeles. Uh, I was there yesterday, so I'm still tired. Um, but uh, the e EA had an event, which was not at E3. It was in the same city as E3. Right, but, Christian, right. you got to go to it, and that was the first time we got to see gameplay of Battlefront 2. Talk to me about your experience. I'll tell you what's funny. We, uh, we actually have a video up right now with myself and Jeremy to where we, we played this stuff. And I went in there hoping to see story. And I was like, because I've played the I played the game the gameplay before, and it was, I was, it was, it was fine. And... But I played the gameplay, and I was more hooked. And, and, and I'll tell you what it was. I was horrendous 
when I was playing it. But one of the reasons, <laughs> when people were like, well, that's why you hate it the first time, because it sucks so bad. <laughs> I, was like, I, was, I, was, I was playing it, the stupid WASD thing. I don't play on keyboards. Yeah. I don't do that. I play I the console stuff. I, so agree with you. I just can't do that. I was, I was trying to figure it out, and I was with a couple of friends. I was like, well, how do you move? And they're like, what? You don't know how to move on a keyboard? Like, no, I don't play on keyboards. <laughs> I can't believe you don't know how to play that. No, yeah, but I, mean, I didn't care about practice. any of that stuff because I was just so into playing the game, even though I was, you know, shooting at statues at one point. But I still, <laughs> as I'm going through it and I'm and I'm and I'm playing the game, um, it was I, Ray just banging your head against the wall? It was. You're it was trying I, to turn around. It, it, no, it was like there were people <laughs> flying and and Darth Maul killed me 87 times. But it, but but <laughs> not it a was bad fun to, to get killed by Darth Maul. It was fun to watch all, all this stuff kind of happen, and it also made me want to play this game today. Like I want to play the game because I feel like there's so much more detail involved than there was last time. I think that the way that you you get special characters like Ray or Darth Maul is that you have to earn the points for them, which I think is so much better than picking up those silly tokens from the last one. But then being able to talk to pr the producer and the designer about about what is going on in story mode, hearing um, hearing them, they had that whole presentation about we knew this the perspective of the Empire, but the hype of this game seems to be there. It mm -hmm. seems to be even more so than Battlefront because Battlefront the reason the first one had so much hype is it was the first game we were getting in the new in the new regime. This is different. And I even said to Jeremy, I was like, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the first one was almost just kind of like a demo that they throw out there while they work on number two because they finished this one in like two years. No way. They've mm -hmm. been working on this thing a lot longer than that because the amount of detail was in this game Tiffany, did you get to go? Because normally you go to E3 every year. You didn't go yeah, this year, Yeah, I didn't year, go right? to E3 no, okay. this year, but I did you follow along with social right. media. But I, I think that, you know, what you're saying is to I totally agree that I think Battlefront came out. And I remember, I'm going to try that again. When Battlefront came out and we were talking about it, there was so much stuff that they couldn't even delve into because the movie hadn't come out yet and they couldn't tell any story, couldn't really delve right. too deeply into anything. So I'm sure that there was stuff that they initially were like, can we do this in Battlefront, the first one? They're like, no, you can't do it in that right, one. Right. No, you can't. And they're like, all of that's going into Battlefront 2. Um, so that just made me really excited about it. But the two things I think that I'm the most excited about with this game, there's so many freaking vehicles that you get to drive, A lot. which is insane. Yep. I mean, you look at that list and it's just like, it just keeps going. Yep. And then the fact that you have different classes that you can play as characters, that I love so much because it's like what you were saying, collecting the tokens is one way of doing things, but then also when you get to play different characters and it's like, you know that they each get to do different things. They each have different qualifications, whether you're a commander or a certain kind of stormtrooper, mm -hmm. you get to do different types of missions and things in the game and campaigns, which I think is so awesome. So those are the two things I think that stood out the most to me. And I think it is something that's really interesting because generally when a first game comes out and it kind of has a like, wah, wah, right. like very quick burnout after it coming out. It's rare to have a second one come out and people be even more excited about it than the first one. But I think that's what Star Wars can do, where it's like, okay, it was Star Wars, it's okay, we'll give it a bye. Right. And now we're ready for this one, this real Battlefront to come out. Ken. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it here. I got a list of stuff here. Do you want me to just start going off? Yeah, here? let's go. So yeah. our, our buddies over at StarWarsNewsNet.com came up with this entire list, kind of breakdown of everything that they saw and everything that they that we learned from Battlefront. And um, Ken's gonna read it out. Yeah, here's a quick rundown that they got. I mean, there's a lot of playable factions: Galactic Republic, the Independent G Confederacy of Independent Systems, the Empire, the Rebel Alliance, the New Republic, the First Order, the Resistance. Playable heroes will include Yoda, Darth Maul, Darth Vader, Boba Fett, uh, Iden Versio, and Gideon Hask from Inferno Squad. Uh, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Kylo Ren, Captain Phasma, and Finn will be part of DLC, and of course, Rey and her 12 lightsabers that she built in the cave. Uh, vehicles <laughs> include. 14, the, I mean, there's so many: Slave One, Vulture Droids. Uh, landing ships, uh, the Jedi Interceptor, Naboo Starfighters, which actually I really like that idea. V Wings, Arc 170s with the clone troopers, uh, Walkers, you got ADATs, ATSDs, uh, TIE Fighters, TIE Interceptors, all the classics. <laughs> the Millennium Falcon, X Wings, the T 65B models, Y Wings, ooh, Team Y Wings, it's still going. finally represented A Wings, uh, uh, B Frigates, Corvettes, Mon Calamari Cruisers, baby, I'll be Admiral Radis. <laughs> There's so much stuff here. The T 
T-70X wings, uh, which, of course, Poe flies. Battle, uh, playable battlefronts include Naboo, Kamino, Kashyyyk, Tatooine, Yavin 4, Hoth, Endor, Vardos, Jakku, Takadana. We can go hang out with Maz Kanata, Starkiller Base, Dakar, and Crate, which are from uh, DLC packs. Crate, of course, in The Last Jedi. And spaceship interiors and a variety of space battles. Uh, we got some story details. You can read that about the single-player mode. There's a lot of characters, classic, uh, classes, and vehicles. So you can be officers, you can be heavy troopers, snipers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there are microtransactions, but this is more about uh, paying to unlock stuff early. And all the DLC content, the downloadable, the downloadable content content, is what I just said there, will be free. As they say in Star Wars Newsnet, it's true. All of it. And uh, we got stuff in The Last Jedi. Era mixing may or may not be a thing. That's confused, uh, not not confirmed yet. So uh, there is a lot in this game. Do Riley. anyone else think Sorry. it was weird that there's just Corvette? <laughs> there's well, well you know, it's a, it's a 1978 Corvette. It's, yeah, it's yeah. actually from Corvette Summer. You yeah. can just uh, it's unlockable. <laughs> you can just get Mark Hamill drives around. It's fine next to a potato like yeah. that was in uh, Empire Strikes Back. Riley. Uh, oh my God! Sign get, me up. Get you. Uh, yeah, I was. <laughs> I'm going down this list going, Slave 1, I get the Tauntaun. I, I'm in. Oh, yeah, you I, can ride Tauntauns. Yeah, yeah right. I, because I, I had to turn in my Star Wars fan card when I played Battlefront, and like the third way through, mm. I was like, okay, what else? I, I, I felt really bad. I tried to really get into it. I'm a story mode guy. I like to pick a character and do all the levels, and that's what I'm really looking forward to with this. And then I'm starting to get into the online stuff, playing my uh, Friday the 13th. So I, I'm seeing how fun it is to to interact with people online. So I'll probably unlock this. But I'm with you, Christian. I think they've been planning this a yeah. very long time. You look at the. I'm with you, man. Look at all of this stuff. They're like, where did he get all these wonderful <laughs> toys? <Yeah>. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm that, excited. I feel like it also is one of those things, too, where you see that a gaming company really listens to the players, mm. where a lot yes. of the response was, I played through it once, and I was like, nah, I don't need to play it again. Right. Yeah. But running down that list of all of those different things and places you can go and vehicles you can drive and characters you can play as, they definitely took care of that, because I feel like you're going to get to play over and over and over, and you could play one character one way a million times, and then you're like, now I'm going to do this, and they're going to use this vehicle. Um, so I think that the game play length of time, they've just expanded that like a million times over. So yeah. well, I'm happy about that. And not just that. I mean, in, in talking with the producer and the designer, they one of the things that everybody was very aware of was the fact that how pissed off people were <laughs> that you had to keep buying stuff. And it's like, oh, no, you can have this, but you got to pay for this. And then people just mm -hmm. like, why don't just give it to me? And they, and they, they are doing that. And they are doing it this time. There's going to be a lot of stuff this time around that you're just going to get for free. You add it on. It's not going to cost you a penny. I think that is a very smart way to go. It, it's how they got our buddy Jeremy Johns on board because he refused to play yeah. the first one because of that. And he, put, he took a stance, and I commend him for taking that stance because he never, he never played the first one. But when he found out that the second one wasn't going to do that, he said, all right, let me, let me, let's test it out. And now, he, now he's on board with it. They won him over. So I think that that's how you're going to win over fans by doing it that way. So, um, Ken, anything else that stands out before we move on? No, I'm just very excited. I'm one of the ones that still plays Battlefront, but I, I, I've always agreed with the criticisms, and I just kind of sometimes get like get caught in a time warp and just play Jakku over and over again. I like it, but everything here is getting me really excited for a more complete experience, and I and I think there's a lot of uh, kudos should be given to the the game creators who who really took some notes and took stuff forward and had a plan probably already in place. I don't think they were all like, oh, let's just have the fans dictate what we right, do. Right. Um, and uh, you know, even John Boyega got in the action. That actually was uh, his tweet from a, a year or so ago when the game came out about when we're going to get a single player was featured in their presentation and uh, definitely talked about when they mm -hmm. designed this. And again, as a prequelist, I, I love, I, I want to be on Camino. I want to be on Naboo. I think it looks great. Watching you um, suck was awesome. Was fun. I know. It was, it was good for everybody except me. All right, so let's get to the next story, though. I just want to say real quick, we're gonna, uh, just to let everybody know that I wanted to let everybody know that Rogue One Issue 3 is out. It is available now. So if you guys want to see... Did, Tiffany, have you read it yet? Not no. yet. Okay, so 
I just want to let everyone know that we are we're going to cover the comics, but I still always want, even if we haven't read it, to make everybody aware that it is available now. But we're going to move on to the next one, which is another Battlefront story. Ken, what do we find out about the novel of Battlefront? Yeah, we found, and this was revealed on the Star Wars show on uh, YouTube there, on the Star Wars YouTube channel, that uh, Battlefront 2 Inferno Squad, the book written by Christy Golden that will be coming out, will uh, have an audio version, and uh, as all of them do. And uh, Janina Gavankar, who is uh, Aiden Versio, will be reading it. And uh, Christian, you like to listen to these books on tape there, huh? Yeah, and she's... Um she, she's she's attractive. I'm not going to lie to you, but she's also but she is someone that uh, you got lost there for a minute, right? It's yeah. a good picture. What was going to happen? Yeah. It's a good after picture. That. But she's also a hardcore Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. I mean, you she's listen great. to her, and and how cool was it? The way that she presented herself when she came out there, like she's like all just badass, like yeah. introducing what's going to be happening, and that she finally could talk about this thing, um, that, that she is going to be narrating it, and I think this is the way to go when you can get people to do it, like they did this with. Ashley Eckstein for the Ahsoka yeah. novel, mm-hmm. and now they're going to do it here. I think that this is a smart way to do it. It really gets you invested and really makes you want to listen to these audiobooks, too. So um, good move, smart move, and I'm, I really want to see how this is the first time that they're, they did it. Remember, the Battlefront novel with Alexander Freed came mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. But it had nothing to do. Mm-hmm. Right. It, it just, yeah. It had not, it just, there's, there's a similar name. This links into the story. Mm, so, very much this so. is the first time they're going to be able to do something like this. So, I'm, this is the way I always kind of envisioned them doing this type of stuff when they were going to link everything together because this is the way to connect canon junkies like ourselves into stories like this. Now you're going to want to buy this even more so. I mean, Christy Golden, I know that you liked um, Dark Disciple very much, I as did it. I. But you're even more intrigued now than A, you know it links into Battlefront. B, that the star of the game is indeed yeah. doing it. Well, and I think the other cool thing is the fact that, like you said, this is someone who is a fan of the game, who is in the game, and now voicing it. And what's really interesting is where, okay, so Ashley, she's voiced an animated character, but she's not an actor fully on the big screen or TV screen as herself most of the time. But she is. And so this is one of those things where it's like, when we talk about, are we going to see more characters end up in the films or TV world? It's like, well, this is a situation where it's like, she's first an actor and then she's voicing this. So I think that that opens the door even more to being able to say, okay, yeah, if we keep getting actors coming in and doing voices of characters that we're seeing in books or games, I think it ups the percentage that we're going to see them on a TV version or film version even sooner. And the other thing that I love so much is so when I first started working at G4 and Attack of the Show was going on and they were finding fill-ins for Olivia Munn, she came on and filled in on the show. And so I remember like meeting her and watching the stuff and being like, man, like I love it so much. She's, She's like a real geek. She loves all this stuff. She can really like get into those conversations and so yeah Yeah. which i absolutely love and i love seeing obviously more women who are so tapped in and getting even more opportunities which is so cool i just i feel like it's one of those people where i saw her a long time ago and was like oh she's a nerd and i love it and so this is really extra exciting riley what's more exciting the fact that she's doing the audiobook or the fact that we actually have footage of her choking out josh mccuga on a couch uh definitely the choking out josh mccuga on a couch (laughs) is uh awesome um but i'm gonna go to your point christian i I'm not, I, I, I'm so behind on all these books, but this one I want to read because of what you said. It's going into the story of the actual right. game, which is an interesting story. What happens after the Battle of Endor? What is the Emperor's contingency plans? I know it's touched on in uh, Aftermath, mm-hmm. but I really like this. Um, I love what you're saying, Tiff, about how she's a just, she's one of us, and she's going to be doing not only the voice, but she's doing, um, obviously she did some work on probably mocap, uh, you know, some acting for the video game. So Was that the around, image that came out that everyone, that I, I got a lot of tweets about being like, this looks Tiffany like Smith. Tiffany. Yes. Yeah, there yeah, are a yeah, few yeah. that looked exactly I, like I you. I thought yeah. it was you at one point. But yeah, all across the board, <laughs> this is great. I can't wait for this story. This is actually one of those books I'm gonna pick up. All right, Ken, what do you think? Uh, I love it. She's great. That interview on the Star Wars show with Andy Gutierrez is great because she, uh, Genius, starts crying and, oh, and really? just overwhelmed by the fact that she's involved with this. Mm-hmm. And I love seeing that. It's like it's like when you know Daisy Ridley and John Boyega were so excited watching the trailer and that footage came out of right. Force Awakens she again. Falls over the couch. You know, it's yeah. not, it shouldn't be a prerequisite that you are a Star Wars fan and and that you can't be uh, in a Star Wars movie unless you're a Star Wars fan. That's not what I think. But it is extra special when it means even more to this. 
this generation uh, performers because you know uh, we're all at this point making Star Wars fan films. We really are sure. uh, because we grew up in the generation of George. So uh, I'm excited. I think she's going to be great. Um, and uh, look at this book. Christy Golden, Dark Disciple was a, a, a great based on those uh, Clone Wars scripts. And it was good, man. So definitely a win all around. All right. Now we're going to move into the part. Now, normally we hear from you guys. You hashtag Collider Jedi Council. We go through them, and we would encourage you guys to do that for next week. These tweets are a little different this week. Mm -hmm. Ken, how are we doing the tweets? Well, uh, we are going to be taking a look at Pablo Hidalgo's Twitter handle. Now, uh, Pablo is uh, one of the key figures in Lucasfilm Store Group. He's also probably one of the more front and center, whether he wants to be or not sometimes. And his if you follow him on Twitter, it's a fun kind of entertainment mm -hmm. and journey. Because, uh, and some, informational. And informational. The man knows his stuff. I would lose in a Star Wars trivia battle to him in two seconds. Right. He'd knock me out in the first round, I'm sure. But uh, he's uh, sometimes a little uh, humorously prickly with the fans. Uh, I'm sure he gets 42,000 questions a day. But actually, Christian, he answered some that we're going to pull here and play. Uh, what did Pablo tweet? Yeah, it really is one of the <laughs> things like this week in Pablo, I <laughs> yeah. think. And you know, he, there were so many. And once again, Star Wars Newsnet pulled a lot of these. And as I'm reading them, I'm just like, we should just talk about these because there's a lot of great conversation inside oh, yeah. of these and questions that people have been asking for a long time and when he gives the answer it's like well there you go there you that's go that's it so ken what are some of the exchanges that they have all right first it's from a twitter uh, uh kit fisto at holocron underscore <laughs> keeper pablo question for you are deleted or extra scenes canon if not how did shock t die shock t of course uh famously died in a deleted scene in revenge of the sith but then uh actually later officially died inside the jedi temple pablo responds case by case shock t did die in the jedi temple but we haven't seen how because that hasn't been dr dramatized dramatized in a story this is kind of stuff I need him to answer because yeah. sometimes you get a little confused by the certain things in the like. So wait, did Anakin actually see her die or die yeah. in the in that one scene? And grievous killer, or did he, she was she when in the she temple temple when she well, was meditating and well there you go. You so know. she died in the temple. We know yeah. that now, and that's that's confirmed by Pablo Hidalgo. And whether or not now you know maybe that's something that they have been discussing of how they're going to show that eventually. And now Pablo can say, well, I've I've talked about that before. We're it happened there. We just haven't shown how, or whether or not it's in a, in, in you know, a, a comic book that when they maybe this the new comic book with Vader right. and they revisit. Maybe that it was Anakin that took her out. You mm -hmm. know, we, we mm -hmm. don't know, but we know that she, for officially she died there. Do you are you satisfied with this answer? Yeah, I mean, I think that the great thing about him and his tweets in general is that if people ask a question that he feels like actually warrants an answer and he has a clear one to give he will give a clear answer and that's what he did right there where right. it's like okay here's the question yep in the temple so you guys all know that but i don't have all the other details because it hasn't been shown yet right. so there is this like i feel like a respect that he gives where it's okay i'll give you the answer but i'm also going to tell you that we don't have this other part fleshed out yet so who knows what's going to happen down the line because he also doesn't want to put his foot in his mouth foot in his mouth and say something too much sure. and then later on it's like well it wasn't the temple but like you said it happened like this but really it happened like this um so yeah i think that i i love the tweet i think it was a good good response okay as i hit my face uh i like this answer it confirms uh stuff you know we also shakti also appeared in the force unleashed game so that was a for a time a different path of that character so i i like that uh, this is somewhat confirmed and, and i agree like it's like he himself has said pablo said just because something uh you know, from legends isn't canon yet does it doesn't mean we haven't got to it yet we just we don't have everything mapped out we'll get to if we need to we'll get to it right and this is one of those things i think it's something we could see and her interaction with anakin could or at least read about read right? about mm -hmm. read about is what i more more than yeah. more than anything uh, you know her reaction to anakin her her interaction could could give us a piece into anakin's mind at that time or what's to come Riley, yeah i just like the clarification i love that pablo finally is giving what you said christian giving some answers clarifying some things getting the fans to go oh cool okay right now we can uh and as we'll get to now more questions are coming up where it's just expanding or getting the hints of things to come like you guys are talking about perhaps mm -hmm. we could see this in a future book i would personally love to see it as a comic i think that would be fun i love revisiting i'm a, a prequelist as well i think ken and i would love to see some of the little smaller things that maybe were only touched on in a deleted scene or otherwise uh, splashed across a full page thing in a comics this this one especially uh what's next 
Next one is from a guy named Ryan D. So why no mercy kill? Obi-Wan walked away when Anakin was still freaking on fire. Any inside, Pablo? <laughs> I hate rewatching the prequels. First of all, Ryan, it, it, stop. All right. There's a lot in those prequels that you yeah. can learn about, about Star Wars and the greater picture. Pablo writes, I would guess the writer of that particular story didn't think it fit the character, that writer being George Lucas. Mm. Or that said, uh, or that said character, Obi-Wan figured he was a goner. I, I read that one way with Pablo Hidalgo was, uh, yeah, we probably would have done that a little differently. Maybe. Yeah, really? Yes. I, 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 but he's never going to say that. That mm-hmm. I always felt that way. A I lot think, of people do. Yes. There are, I mean, I, and I, I also, I understand what the, what the guy who wrote the tweet was saying, though. I, I don't think he should stop it. I think that, he, that he's saying he doesn't like to rewatch the prequels because he gets all those questions. Because like I say when I read the prequels, I, have, I wouldn't call myself a prequelist because I think that, but what I have, and I've said, I have learned to appreciate them more now. Um, but I would say that there are, the reason I, I enjoy them is because the story is there. Mm-hmm. The reason I still find myself going, because the story was there and there's so much execution that just wasn't done yeah. well, that being one of those moments. He just leaves his friend burning. It's like it's not. It's not a matter of like he thought he was. It was a. He was just gonna die out. It was like, it's one of the most powerful Jedi you've ever seen ever, and he's your friend. You're just gonna let him burn and be in pain. He either should have taken him out, or they should have done the fight differently, to where he'd fallen off a cliff, like all these different things that could have happened, and then they found him. But just standing there like that, there were a couple things. Even the fact that your father wanted you to have this when you're old enough, like I wish that would have happened. That kind of conversation would happen. Little things here and there, but. I like the explanation, Pablo. I don't buy it all the way, but I like the explanation. How do you feel? Don't forget, Obi-Wan is described in the Clone Wars by, I believe, Duchess Satine herself. Here is the collection of half-truths and hyperbole that is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's That stuff later on fits into uh, the character, somewhat retconned that they get into. I, I agree with what you're saying. When I call myself a prequel, to say again again. It doesn't mean I love that Jar Jar stepped in the poo-poo. Right. It just means My that, daughter loves that. The, the the, well, yeah. and there's a point. It just uh, it means there's so much, there's rich layers in what Lucas was trying to do and that era of story stories that the Clone Wars did a great job right, of expanding right. on. But I do agree with what you and I do, maybe a little bit what you're saying about what Pablo's trying to say here. Um, but, uh, you know, I also would know, too, Christian, if if you fell into a pit of lava, I'd probably let you just I figure that out that. on your own. That's so nice. Well, you wouldn't tweet about it, i tell you that. Yeah. Uh, Ken, uh, whatever your name is, Riley, what do you got? Yeah, yeah Ken, Ken works. Yeah. Um, did anybody with the prequels do what I did, which is just fill in the blanks yourself and just go, nope, it works in my head, and right. just force yourself? Right. Head cannon, yeah. This is head cannon. This is one of those moments because... If I could take myself out of making it work in my own head, yep, he let his friend die, which doesn't seem right. Um, He's laying there. He could have done a finishing blow, which doesn't seem right. And then he picks up the lightsaber. It's kind of forced. Like, oh, yeah, the lightsaber. We got to pay that off in New Hope, the next movie. So all of this doesn't work. And I get the Pablo Hidalgo. I'm reading it a little differently than you are, Christian. I think he, you know, I would guess the writer had a particular story. Didn't think it fit the character. That's where I'm going. That's where I was fitting in my maybe Obi-Wan Kenobi was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm walking away. I literally can't do the finishing blow. And I don't want to see him burn to death. I'm just going to leave him there and walk off. Again, that doesn't really work in my head either uh, too much. Again, major point here. I love Pablo Hidalgo talking to the fans. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do it a lot. He does send out a lot of Transformers images, though, which I also appreciate. (laughs) Uh, Tiffany. Um, I, it is one of those moments where it's curious, but you kind of mm-hmm. just go with it because mm-hmm. it gets you, like you said, to the next film. Um, <laughs> and I think that that's kind of, that was the driving force between behind that scene where it's like, okay, we have to get to here. How can we get to there from where we are? Well, he can't, he can't fully finish him because then we don't get other things. Right. Um, so it's like, how do we do that? But then also honor the character. And I feel like the storyline took way more importance than saying we're going to honor who Obi-Wan sure. is as a character. Um, and I think that maybe that's kind of what Pablo was saying there. Because obviously now, looking at how they put the films together, there is so much forethought as to what's coming next, what's coming after. and. At that time, it was like, okay, well, we did, the originals had come out, let's do the prequels. We don't know what's going to happen, but we already have what's happening after. Mm -hmm. How do we make them fit together? Um, And I think there's a couple of hiccups, like that one in particular, that stand out. So I think that Pablo did the best thing that he could do there is Mm -hmm. he can't crap on it and say like, oh my God, I wish we did, it could have been so much better. Um, But also understanding that he's like, yeah, I mean, 
I agree as a fan and you know if we could go back and change some stuff maybe that would be one of the things that we would do a little fixing on yeah um all right let's do the one more ken let's take us out how about the uh, you pick one one more huh yeah, one pick. more um okay i i think we should go to the, the last one do yeah. it. adam for you this. this one's pretty funny all right so a guy named uh gm gm nair says hold on pablo why did padme <laughs> get pregnant You'd think that the, quote, <laughs> forbidden love, they wouldn't try for a kid. It'd blow their cover. Mm. Pablo, does that conversation between Anakin and Padme when they're reunited <laughs> at the beginning of episode three make you think it was planned? <laughs> I guess try for is bad phrasing. You know, I, I thought they'd be more careful at the very least. It's not necessarily, quote, something wonderful. Pablo, what about Anakin and Padme's relationship? <laughs> Smacks of well-reasoned, measured, planned, and logical. Now this is the stuff this. where I'm going to go, all of that makes sense, what Pablo's <laughs> talking about. Yeah. He's right. He's right from head to toe there. He is right. He's he's like, no, the whole point of that <laughs> thing is that they made stupid choices. From the, now, I don't necessarily mm -hmm. a, agree with the fact, and we talked about this the other day, that they should have gone with this whole Jedi can't be, you know, be in love sure. and all that. I, I think that that should have been abandoned from the beginning. But the fact of it's not, and this is the way that it went, and they made stupid decisions all the way through. And one of those stupid decisions was, hey, let's let's not use protection this time around, whatever it was, or not use the force. And they didn't <laughs> use it. He didn't use the force that day, and he got and she got pregnant, and that's what happened. Or the force <clears throat> was like, this, no. is this is happening. No. You no are having what. these no, babies. Can, no, the force was very strong. I can see Anakin. Day. You know, I can see Anakin. I hate condoms. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. They're exactly. coarse and they're rough. weird right, and they're right. rough. And they I don't like them. They get everywhere. I, uh, <laughs> it gets everywhere. Real nice, Ken. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> so anyway, point is, I'm with Pablo on this. That totally. makes sense. I, I I can see how because they and their kids. They're not. They're not paying. They're not paying attention. One thing went one way, and you got twins. Yeah, that's how it happens, man. <laughs> I love twins. Pablo's answers here. And this is the stuff that you said is entertaining. This is stuff. And I, we're not making fun of this guy asking. He had an honest question. Yeah. But sometimes, and we get them too. Sometimes those questions where it's like, slow down. Think about take it. Take a moment. Right. Answer the question yourself. Uh, this is why Pablo draws draws transformer pictures all day. And Pablo, if you're listening, I'd like a ratchet picture he was my favorite transformer growing up he was the medic of the team um and yeah absolutely and it, it, this is all passion it, padme didn't want this uh, she was like you know come on annie i, I don't look at you that way and, right. he was, he, and he made the the fruit float up and use the force obi-wan would have hated that so uh i love this <laughs> answer it's, very grumpy it's yes. literally still one of my favorite things on youtube if you have not seen friend zone Mm -hmm. Like someone did a little spoof oh, of all the it. interactions with Anakin oh, and yeah. Padme, and they're so funny. Like, yeah. go back and watch them. Yeah, we'll that's all it. the birth control she needed, but got. apparently not. <laughs> all right, well, that's everything here in the world of the tweets <laughs> uh, and Pablo Hidalgo this week in Pablo Hidalgo Tweetland, and that's it for everything on the council today. I'd like to thank the council that was here, the Smith Lord. She was back. Where can they find you? Uh, you guys can find me on social media at Tiffany's Tweets on Insta, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, all that good stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of what the next thing coming up is. I feel like the next thing I'm just looking forward to is freaking Comic-Con, guys. So wow. it's soon. It's coming up. Mark, Yodi, Riley, where can they find you? At Riley Around on Twitter and Instagram. You'll see me there all the time sharing all the wonderfulness that is here at Collider Video. Mr. Kylo Ken, Ken Napsok. I wasn't that grumpy today, and I want no, you, you were, to you acknowledge were that. You were, last night, uh, you were terrible. Last you guys night, started yeah. out kind of on the ground. All of you guys started out yeah, on the grumpy got train. But like, busy busy day. You can follow Star me at Ken Napsok. And today, if you're watching, uh, well, now actually would have already, just watch every Thursday, 2 p.m. PST on the Collider Facebook page. Uh, you can watch Inside Schmodown. We had Josh McCuga this week. We got wonderful guests uh, related to the Schmodown, breaking stories and everything. We do it live every Thursday. So that is it. And I want to say shout out to Gus on Act Two with Lou. <laughs> nice, Hang Gus Browns. You can find me at Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram. Like Ken mentioned, make sure you check out the Inside Schmodown on Facebook for Collider every Thursday at 2 p.m. PST live, as well as the Schmodown itself every Friday. Go ahead, check it out. Thank you, guys. Make sure that you hashtag Collider Jedi Council. Get some tweets on the air. We'll see you next time. May the Force be with you always. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.